fine so uh, today we are in 2024 so i am putting the year 23 sorry okay and in 1979 put a 1979 here okay make a difference of that this minus this 44 years since 1979 in 79 uh, there's something called sensex which was 100 Today, I think it's around close to about 63,000 or 64,000. So, let's say put 63,000. Fine. Okay. So, that means 100 rupees has become equivalent to 63,000 in 44 years. So, you want to know what is the kind of return you are getting by putting 100 rupees in all the 30 companies of India, which, you know, uh, comprises all the best companies of India. Not all the best, but comprising the whole of the, um, you know, industries of India. Uh, so, um, then I, you know, find basically the uh, the rate. Let me just see whether I'm uh, putting the right one. Formulas, I'll just use rate. Okay. So here I say 44. 44 is the number of years. So I put it under the column N P E R. How many years? 40. Or you can even put 44. You can either link. To the number there or put just you can even put 40 44 okay whatever is your choice then you know in 1979 this was equivalent to 100 so i put a minus sign here and just choose this 100 i'll tell you uh, sorry so i uh, you know again do it uh, 44 uh, and minus 100 okay so i can even link to that and today the value is 63,000. So that means if you had invested 100 rupees, it would have gone from your pocket. That's was minus. And today it has become, you know, uh, 63,000. Okay. So I'm just putting a marker here. So I think the formula got a little bugged. So uh, rate. Uh, repeat. So 44 years, present value is uh, minus 100. And the future value is how much? 63,000. Uh, 63,500 I put. Okay, fine. So, I put, okay. So, you get 16% return. So, that means if you had invested in equity markets. Yeah, come. No, 16 will come. You So, I am making it this as 63,500. Okay. So, I go to formulas, I pick up recently used rate, okay, and then I put 44 here and here minus 100 dal deta hun, or future value mein dal deta hun, 63,500, okay. Then I say enter, so it will come to 16%. Yes. Aage? Yes, 100%. No, 10% will come, again, you can clean it up again, 16% will come. So, that means if you have invested your 100 rupees in stock market, in the 30 shares, you know, of top Indian companies, it has given you 16% return. It means that. Okay. Fine. Now, if you were to put, you know, Colonel Sahib, he's, you know, doesn't believe in stock market. Can, acha uh, maybe. Ah, bottom right, sorry. So, 16% return you are getting. Fine. Is that okay? 16% return. Now, you know, uh, Colonel Saab is doesn't believe in stock market. So, he says I am going to put 100 rupees in, in FD. Okay, 100 rupees in FD. Fine. Now, an FD gives you how much return? How much return? 8% is little higher, 7 to 8% in between, okay. So, let me put 7.5%, okay. Even put 8% also, fine. So, if we have put the same money for 44 rupees, for 44 years, 100 rupees would have become how much? Is there any guess? Karnal sahab, batao, guess kya hoga kuch? Future value. Kitha future value nahi, ek se kya. Ab mein formula use karne ke bada, mein aapko bata raha hoon ki, agar aapne 100 rupiah FD mein lagaya hoota, Instead of not putting in stock market, what would have been your money? After 40 years. Uh, after 44 same years, 
अगर सेवेंटी में आपने हंड्रेड रुपीज लगाए थे साढ़े ब्याज मिला अगर 16 परसेंट मिला तो वो पैसा हो गया तिरसठ हजार पांच सौ का अगर साढ़े सात परसेंट लगाया था तो कितना हो? 40,000, ओके, ओके, 28,000 समरी, सो लेट्स सी हाउ मच यू गेट सो हेयर आई पुट यू नो फॉर्मूला एंड गो टू द फ्यूचर वैल्यू ओके हेयर आई यूज द फ्यूचर वैल्यू रेट इज 7.5 परसेंट ओके एनपीआर इज फोर्टी and uh, present value is 100 minus and we enter it so you get 2409 rupees so tell that tells you that there is a you know a power of compounding you know as you put money at a higher rate of interest it is going to magnify and generate a big wealth for you and this was you know realized by people like uh, you know uh, buffet and you know a lot of people in india They said if you get around 15 to 6. Now, mind you, this 16 percent return is basically on the 30 companies of India. Take the two companies who would have got 17, 18, 19 percent. Then money would have been much higher. But FD, you get around seven and a half percent. Sometimes eight, sometimes six. So I put a mean this thing average. So if you put your money in a fixed deposit, actually you are destroying wealth. If you have a long term horizon, ha, agar six months ke liye dalna hai, saal ke liye dalna hai, it's fine. But if you are putting money for five years, ten years, then actually you are doing the most, some of the wrong thing. Now in this 44 years, we have witnessed so many scams: Arshan Mehta scam, Ketan Paras scam, financial meltdown in US impacting India, where the market you know came down 60 percent. COVID, all kinds of you know you know rough times India and the global economy has passed through. But you know the the returns have been magnified, close to about 16 percent. And this is you know after the correction. The market was around sixty-seven thousand, you know, just a week, a month back, and it is bound to bounce back. Okay, fine. So it's a correction. It gives an opportunity for people to re-enter in the market. अब लगा लो पैसा ये बता रही है आप. ऐसी opportunities बहुत मिलेगी आपको. किसने लगा था? हाँ, वही तो बता रहा हूँ मैं. आज उसी का session है. Okay. So of course my advice is don't put money in stocks. Put in mutual funds. Okay. Now mutual funds. Uh, you know, can be either large cap mutual funds, mid cap mutual funds, small cap mutual funds, or flexi caps. Right? A, a mid cap fund or a small cap funds, which are more riskier, gives you around a return of close to about 25 percent. Okay, 25 percent return. अभी तो 40 percent दे रहे हैं मैं आपको 25 बड़ा कंजर्वेटिव बता रहा हूँ. Okay, and mid cap will give you around close to about 20 percent. And large caps, which is coming out here because it's all 30 companies, which are big companies of India, they give around 60 percent return. No guarantee, but over the long period, guarantee is full. Okay, fine. But guarantee, nobody will say that will give you a guarantee. But if you invest for a long, you can just see for yourself. Forty-four years, we have passed through so many turmoils, and the return has been close to about sixteen percent. Is that okay? Fine. So putting your money in a fixed deposit will not lead you to anywhere. A seven and a half percent return will not lead to a wealth creation for yourself. it can be only created if you put money take some risk but over the long term there is no risk in putting money in stock markets there is a risk in an fd fd is more riskier than a equity people have the other way around that the stock market is risky definitely is risky if you are putting your money for 3 years only or 2 years or 1 year then it's a risky place okay and sometimes people get carried away and they put all the money at one go don't do that keep investing in a very small small manner And you are going to get a 16% return or more. That is assured. Okay. Don't put a lump sum like 10 lakh rupees or 5 lakh rupees. Today I have all my equity. Don't do that. Keep investing your money in a small, small, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, tranches, and it will be like a ship. For example, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, and it will magnify and make you a very, very rich person in the world. Okay. So Now. <laughs> Now this is the return which you are getting. This is uh, inflation is above and above this return. So the FD is barely you know meeting the inflation. If the inflation is close to about five to six percent, then you are earning only two point five percent. There, if you are earning sixteen percent, you are earning around close to about nine to ten percent above the inflation, isn't it? Fine. So inflate. This is not inflation adjusted return. Okay. Fine. Is that clear? now uh, i'll also you know show you a site uh, give you you know some uh, 
uh, though of course you can even vouch, i mean go and subscribe to the site yourself uh, it gives you you know uh, all the details you know of any stock you want to invest suppose you are interested in putting your money only in stocks but of course my advice is not to put i don't invest even a penny in stock of course i have a very small investment in reliance or maybe some other companies but but i have put my money majorly into mutual funds and it is a combination of large mid and small caps almost like 70% of my money uh, is in mutual funds and 30% into fixed income securities not in fixed deposit i'll tell you what are those they they are better you know kind of instruments rather than putting money in fixed deposit put them into mutual funds which are investing into bonds and fixed income securities okay fine it it has lost its sheen over the last time in march when the new you know it, i mean uh, they, you were entitled for a you know a, 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 a indexation benefit which has been removed so it was a very tax uh, you know savvy uh, kind of a, uh, uh, i mean in, uh, investment the fixed income securities but still it has a charm you don't have to pay a tax before you sell it in an fd you will be charged a tax a tds you know every 6 uh, months or every 3 months some amount will be deducted but in fixed income securities mutual funds there is no tds you have to pay your tax yourself okay fine and it is all better tax compliant you know kind of instrument so we'll talk about that later so you know this there is a site which gives you details of each and every stock okay aiye sir so i have you know i'm recording so people who are coming late please listen to it it's a important session and uh, so you know there is a site which gives you stock uh, you know of everything so so i have downloaded reliance okay fine so i'll give you a password and id or you can even just pay the money it's about 300 rupees for quarter so at least try for that i'll tell you where to get get this information so you know like uh, first we'll see reliance so what we are do, trying to do we are understanding fundamentally the company okay so there is two analysis fundamental analysis which is very important for a long term investor so a technical analysis is more important for a trader even for long term it's slightly important so i'll tell you what the significance of that later so you know look at reliance industries now this guy you know there is a site which uh, gives you uh, you know information of all the companies in about five or six pages now look at ltg forecast it's saying that the stock is bound to give you 17% return on the long term uh, you know growth in the stock is going to so if you invest in reliance it is going to give you 17% return going forward okay but the only drawback has been one month return minus 0.24% three three month return negative 10% return so over the last three months and over the last one month it has given a negative return but just few days back it has announced its quarterly result which are very good i'll just take you to the quarterly result and the company has started looking up again very well but the company is very big it's a conglomerate it is present into many businesses okay so you know the, it is last price was 2287 okay and uh, almost like 5.2 million shares are bought and sold every day 52 week high was 2600 52 week low was 19 so it is last one year it has hovered between 1900 or 2000 to 2600 and the trailing pe ratio is 24.2 i'll come to that and the forward ratio is 21 and the company is earning around 9% roe which is not very good okay if you put your money in a uh, you know fixed deposit you get 7.5% but this company is giving you just a 9% return but the future is good okay because what the company is doing it is expanding its retail business okay the oil and chemicals and oil exploration business is a low margin business so it has folded into many other businesses which are actually giving a very good return so over the time the share of the revenue or the profit which is generating from the new businesses or the new economy businesses are going to propel the company forward so that's why it is bullish stock okay <clears throat> now the trailing pe ratio so that means stock is currently trading at 24 times what it is earning pe ratio is how much market price per share divided by earning per share so that means whatever it is earning for the shareholders it is trading 24 times which is uh, whether it is high or low we'll just see but when we compare with the historical past we have to see you know at what pe ratio it was trading and now what it is trading if it is trading low then we say it is cheaper but the forward pe you know when we look at the forward pe you know pe ratios can be there are various variants of pe ratios one is instead of taking eps from the current uh, 12 months 
we take the next year. Next year, how the reliance is going to earn? What will be its EPS next year? So going one year forward, the share looks to be cheaper compared to what it is. If we take, if we replace, you know, there is a numerator and denominator. Numerator is the market price per share, which is 2287 divided by earning per share. If we take the last 12 months EPS, then the tailing P ratio is 24.2. But we replace the EPS with the next year, how much is going to go next year? Because next year is jumping by about 15 to 20 percent. So the forward P looks to be quite okay, 21. Okay. Now we'll understand when we go down and see, you know, why it looks okay. Uh, then, you know, uh, institutions, they own about 27%. So, all big players, institutional, you know, like foreign institutions or uh, mutual funds, they own about 27% stock of Reliance. And uh, now, the average score of Reliance is not very good, 6. But if you see that trajectory, it was 9 also, a uh, year back or 9 months back. Then it went down to 5, but it started picking up. Maybe the side has not updated after the quarterly result. It should have gone to 7. Okay. So, on an average, average strength of the stock is 6. Maximum stock uh, should be 10. So, it is trading at, uh, you know, it is given a score of 6. You will find other companies having a score much higher. Castro has a score of 9. IOC 7. BPCL 6. Hindustan Petroleum 6. Reliance 6. But should not go with the score. It sounds to be low. But the future of the company is good because it is doing some kind of, uh, you know, businesses which is going to do well. Now, there are, you know, 32 analysts. I am just going to, you know, focus only on the important one. There are 32 analysts who are tracking this uh, Reliance company. Like, you know, Morgan Stanley. So many companies are there in the world which, you know, focus on these companies. And they come up with their, you know, analysis. Uh, how much this company is going to grow, how much return it is going to and what will the price by which it will go in next six months. So, 32 people are saying buy. So, their combined rating, which is the average rating is say buy. So, that means, you know, 32 analysts are saying go ahead and buy this stock. Not strong buy, but fairly high um, buy, okay, because it's on the right hand side. Otherwise, you know, they would have been sell or hold or something. So, this is buy. So, uh, so uh, let's see, see now. So, this is, you know, a kind of a one-year return, which is negative 1%. Five-year return has been 140%. So, five-year return is very good. It's not that only lately, last year or last one year, it has not done so well. So, now, uh, you know, this is what the business they are doing. So, this company is basically, you know, doing <laughs> business. They have six business segments. One is oil exploration, okay, which is a... a, a uh, upstream business. So, you know, there is an upstream, downstream and midstream businesses in any industry. So, the upstream is when they just take out the oil from the seabed, Krishna Godavari Basin, they just take it out and then they convert them into petrochemicals, diesel, oil, everything, uh, plastics and, you know, polymers and uh, then they sell it. So, these are the two kinds of businesses they have. One is you know, O2C, oil to chemicals, and the first is oil exploration and production business. So, oil production and exploration business is the, uh, the upstream business. And the downstream business is basically the second part, which is, you know, con converting the oil into uh, and adding value to it and converting into value-added products and then selling them. Now, <laughs> the crude prices keep changing up and down, okay? So, there are some companies which are upstream, there are some companies which are downstream. And there is a midstream company which is basically transporting the oil. You know, somebody is exploring oil and then they transport the oil to the refineries. So, they are called mid midstream. Now, Reliance is a combination of everything. Okay. So, now it will have its own, you know, uh, you know the, the, when the crude price goes up or down, so it will have both side impacts. Now, if the crude price goes up, the oil exploration business becomes very profitable. Because if the crude prices goes above, say today it is hovering around $89 or $85. If you go and check the Brent crude price on Google and the NYMEX crude, you will find that it is showing an uptrend after this war which started Hamas and Ukraine. So, uh, it, it's gone up to around close to about $90 uh, a barrel. Okay. So, if the dollar price goes up, the 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 up, uh, the up which one, this, this is which business? Uh, this is uh, up. Uh, Upstream. Upstream is 
केमिकल्स पेट्रोकेमिकल्स नहीं हाँ ऑयल सॉइल इज द इज द अपस्ट्रीम ओके सो अपस्ट्रीम सो आई जस्ट गोइंग टू ओपन अ स्लाइड बिफोर एडिंग एनी कंफ्यूजन टू इट सो जस्ट ओपन दिस स्लाइड सो वेर आई हैव गिवन अ कंप्लीट बिकॉज येस्टरडे आई वॉज जस्ट रिसर्चिंग ऑन इट so if you can just see you know your slide upstream companies okay fine this is a ppt which i have you know shared the file which has been shared by you know the gentleman there and on the google drive you can open up later so upstream companies uh, uh, sir pad sakte hain thoda sa upstream companies are involved in the exploration development and production of crude oil and natural gas so yeah these are called ongc reliance oil india so these are all upstream ओके इफ आई मेंशन दिस आर डाउनस्ट्रीम दिस इज अपस्ट्रीम ओके अपस्ट्रीम जो है ये कंपनी है देन डाउनस्ट्रीम कंपनीज आर बेसिकली आर डाउनस्ट्रीम कंपनीज आर रिस्पांसिबल फॉर रिफाइनिंग क्रूड ऑयल एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग फिनिश्ड पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स टू कंज्यूमर्स ओके सो दे आर कंपनीज व्हिच आर क्लियरली डाउनस्ट्रीम लाइक यू नो यू नो फॉर एग्जांपल एचपी भारत पेट्रोलियम एंड हिंदुस्तान पेट्रोलियम दे आर बेसिकली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स ऑफ ऑयल दे हैव पेट्रोल पंप्स इट्स अ प्योर डाउनस्ट्रीम कंपनी वेयर एज रिलायंस हैज ऑल द फ्लेवर ऑफ इट now you know if you look at this chart it will be clear upstream exploration and production firms explore new hydrocarbon fields okay and develop petroleum products so these are called upstream midstream who are transporting the oil you know from you know the 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 oil exploration place to the ultimate refiner and the downstream is basically who are refining uh, the crude oil and converting them into various products is that okay uh, then you know now you know most important thing is that to understand whether this company is going to do well or not we should know that you know how does the business particularly which is almost like 60% of the revenue coming from this business so how does the crude price impact reliance so crude price impacts the upstream which is let's see what is that just read it upstream is the hardest hit sector during the breakdown of crude oil prices as the selling price of crude oil is determined by market sentiments Okay, you know when what happens when the crude price goes down, so the cost is conversion of you know uh, the the cost exploration cost and everything is fixed. Whereas if the price goes down, the selling price falls, isn't it? So they are the hard. If the selling price, if the crude price goes up, they make money. Okay, okay. Yes. The cost of production of a barrel of oil is more compared to its market selling price. The company will eventually face loss. So at the time when the crude price is falling. reliance this business gets adversely impacted but when the prices are rising so their final product becomes you know more remunerative and their costs are not going up to that tune so they make more margins is that okay so this is one so to understand any business you must understand what it is doing how you know the major raw material is going to have an impact on its business then yeah ओके सर एक सेकंड इसमें आगे सब चीज दी हुई है लेट मी फिनिश एंड देन यू नो यू कैन आस्क क्वेश्चन इफ दे आर अनआंसर्ड ओके यू नो यस्टरडे आई स्पेंड अबाउट टू आवर्स टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इंपैक्ट सो दिस वाज ओनली थिंग व्हिच वाज लेफ्ट इन माय किटी सो आई थॉट ओके लेट मी कंप्लीट दिस क्रूड प्राइस इंपैक्ट्स ऑन अपस्ट्रीम सेक्टर ये ये कौन सा सेक्टर था डाउनस्ट्रीम था अब आते हैं हम अपस्ट्रीम में वेयर इज योर रिफाइनिंग ओके रीड आ गया ना पढ़िए सर अच्छा ये पढ़ लिया ओके ओके फाइन Okay, now you know when the crude price is go down, what happens to this business? This business becomes less remunerative. Now there are various kinds of crude deposits world over. Okay, crude is you know I mean dig from the seabed, it's from the rocks also. shale mining which is called mostly you know in assam and other areas north area we have shale mining which is a very expensive proposition because it involves lots of cost 
of you know exploring the oil and producing them into crude oil so you know those shale mining stops when the crude prices come down similarly in us there is a lot of shale mining done it stops because it becomes less remunerative so a lot of people become jobless at that time okay when the crude prices starts going up so you know all areas become full listing and remunerative and the profits earn so people start digging oil from all the you know possible ways and start making money okay last so when the price goes down so they have to announce either shut down the you know that exploration facility reduce the manpower or whatever so that they bring down the cost impact on the downstream which is the basically the downstream which is oil marketing and producing petrochemicals producing oil the crude oil to uh, the various products okay while upstream is the hardest hit sector with oil downturn downstream has the most effect on the crude prices the downturn condition offers an attractive opportunity to the downstream sector for crude oil and crops when they you know the crude price falls uh, then it is the other way around the the downstream starts making money okay because you know they are finding the prices are coming so their feed stock their raw material is not cheaper they are getting a cheap crude oil and converting them into petrochemicals okay fine aage however the scenario is not uniform for the <coughs> companies the company need to understand the market dynamics and choose its strategies carefully if it tends to capitalize on on oil downturns okay next the low oil environment can be a blessing for various oil and gas companies the fall in crude oil prices feed stock costs fall substantially at the same time the demand for the company's products rises fueled by a pickup in economic growth due to relatively low crude oil prices downstream companies increase their profit margin with crude oil prices so all this you know augurs well for you know the oil marketing companies as well as oil to chemicals companies because the prices come down and you know it, uh, the, the economy starts picking up people start consuming more so demand of the oil goes up so they can always have better earn better profit margins the high margins of downstream companies are well positioned to go ahead with transactions that were not feasible earlier rather than building new infrastructure some companies consider the acquisition of new refining assets so the new project starts coming up at this time you know when uh, the, the business become remunerative so new new capex expansion the companies generally expand in this period okay so uh, this is about you know this thing so i thought i'll just share with you so uh, is it okay so now i think your questions are answered so better i could be i'm not an expert in that so we have to look at you know the readings where it is okay fine so uh, let's say now go to the next one of course now it is into other businesses called retail business and we'll talk about that later okay fine so now these are the four pillars of you know any company if you have to see you know how the company is good bad first is earning second is fundamentally how the company is strong or weak second is the relative valuation how it is valued compared to its peers or the other companies then the risk how risky is the company and the pro- price momentum is the company showing up good price momentum okay so all that will make the total scores to 6 in this case So let's look at the risk. There is least risk by putting your money in this company because it is the highest score. It's a big conglomerate, well diversified into many businesses, and whatever the future future strategies are, they are going to be positive for the company. So that's why no risk. Now let's talk about relative. Uh, sorry, let's talk about the earnings. The earnings are a uh, slightly subdued because major of their you know businesses are from oil exploration and you know oil to chemicals. which are low margin businesses so we'll understand that we'll look into the margin how much margin each sector is doing and then we have a better idea we'll go to the investors presentation which they have just released okay so every time the company announces the result it gives a presentation to its investors so i just picked up from the side i'll share you uh, this uh, ppt has the link to that uh, you know place where you can go and find out so earnings are neutral fundamental companies fundamentally very strong and then each Area is explained at the bottom. Then relative valuation. Company is good. Company is not very expensive. It is seven. It's a place. It's a time when you should put money because it has corrected by ten percent over the last six months. So it is offering you 
uh, you know, now the analysts are saying that it may, average recommendation it will go to 3,000. Currently, it's around 2,300. So, there is a lot of juice in, in that. Price momentum, the company is not showing any price momentum. That's why it is having a very low score. Company is not showing, I mean, rising as along with the whole market. Okay. So, uh, now let's talk about, you know, the, all the peer companies. Okay. It also compares, yeah. Price momentum, if it's going to be that's the best. You know, in the stock market rises, it also rises along with and rises above and beats the benchmark. You know, if the Sensex rises by 10%, rises by 15%, we say this, this stock is good. You know, it is showing up good result because of that it's rising. Suppose if that is the case. Fine. No, it is not that it's least volatile. In the last one year, it has not reacted. The price is not, it's, it, it is, you know, not reacted. It is adversely effective. The market has gone up, but it has gone down. So that is the message what we are getting. Of course, it is, I mean, what you can say less volatile, but for volatility, we look at the beta of the stock. So beta is above one, a little higher above. So it is still more volatile than the market in either direction. I, either, you know, market goes, you know, down, then it goes further down compared to the market. If the market goes down by 5 per 10 percent, it goes down by 15 percent. So, so maybe that is the scenario at the moment. I'm not commenting on that, but I'm just saying that can be the scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Haan, sir, abhi aa hai. Sab ek -ek karke aa hai. I'm just going to show you each box, how it has been built upon. Not in detail, but at least baki sab aap dekh lena, kyunki this is not, I can take, I cannot take, take all the, this on this. We have to do a lot of other things for the day, but you can just go through and then next time you can ask me questions if you don't have. कुछ थोड़ा सा काम आप खुद भी कीजिए मैं कुछ करूंगा फिर आपको जाना पड़ेगा फिर आपको मेरे पास आना पड़ेगा देन आई कैन एबल टू एक्सप्लेन वेल ओके इफ यू आस्क मी क्वेश्चंस एट द मोमेंट मे बी विद लिमिटेड नॉलेज ऑफ योर्स ओके एंड विद लिमिटेड यू नो एक्सेस टू दिस इंफॉर्मेशन अभी आपका वो नॉलेज कई सारे क्वेश्चन तो आपको खुद आंसर मिल जाएंगे खुद आंसर मिल जाएंगे नहीं मिलेंगे तो मेरे पास आइए मैं आपको जरूर आंसर दूंगा उसका ओके आई एम जस्ट पुटिंग अ होल्ड ऑन दैट ओके अदरवाइज आई एक्सप्लेन बट वी विल बी यू नो गोइंग so this is you know it gives you the peer comparison all the companies which are into oil business is telling you what how they stand now if you look at you know the 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 price momentum valuation fundamental analyst so go on the last uh, uh, this thing table tab so reliance long term forecast is 17 percent with other companies there is no forecast okay there is no visibility how much they will grow or they have not done that analysis then you know the, the, the there is a buy for uh, reliance then there is a uh, yeah then there is a buy recommendation for reliance ioc it is buy bp sale it is buy hindustan petroleum it is hold castrol india it's buy uh, gulf oil and lubricant strong buy from this side i picked up i have purchased some 100 stocks of gulf oil also but it has given me around 15% return over the last one Haan, money control ka hai. It's a paid this thing. I To start with, I'll give you the ID and password. You can just go, but then you can even subscribe to this and have your this thing. Gulf oil. Gulf oil, this thing. So I just recently, about last month after this thing, because it's a strong buy, so I went, uh, I bought the shares. Though I hardly invest in shares, but I just keep picking up stock based on some kind of analysis. Not a great deal, but a little bit. So, uh, so this is, you know, and you know, then it tells you the number of analysts you know who are doing so there are 32 analysts uh, and then for uh, the cast oil there are hero petro in, in petro there are 31 so they are telling you okay fine so i'm just skipping that i'm not going to spend here time uh, gulf ke liye ek hi hai. Uh, so there should be a more analyst to really have a very con conviction okay fine so that's a good point so you know don't invest just because of one guy okay but it's a strong buy so i had gone and you know picked up the gulf you know details and everything then only i bought it not just from this then i picked up the gulf chart and found you know what it is the future of gulf then you know the earning so earning is getting about it was about 10 about a year back and now it is close to about you know five and it is it was one about a, a few weeks back so every week all the analysts they are giving their upgrades or downgrades so, you know, from a level of 1, it has shot up to 5 earnings. So, it, they have done very well in the last two quarters. So, that's why the earning rates have gone up. And we'll see in the Excel sheet how the, you know, profit of the company is moving. Okay. So, you know, now, you know, uh, 
there are uh, uh, i'm not going to explain in detail but you can just go through much more in detail yourself there are earning surprises okay and earning revisions and recommendation changes now you know the reliance for every company they announce the results and before they announce the analyst tell how much they are going to do how much earning per share they are going to earn fine they say that the, the profit will go up to the earning price share will be say x but it may go above x or it may go above down so if it goes above x so it beats the analyst expectations so that's called the street so street sometimes you know uh, you know on a all the analysis put together we call it street okay the street you know tells you how much the earnings will be there for reliance next uh, you know quarter and if the reliance beats them so there is a positive earning surprise okay or if it you know if it is not able to beat it's do, if it's doing poorly compared to the estimate the analyst said that it will do you know earning per share of 100 but it is only 90 fine so that means it has there is a negative surprise so uh, you know we have to look at you know how many uh, positive and how many negative surprise so there were positive surprises zero okay uh, negative surprises three and inline surprises one fine ha you know actually this side has given 33% on the earning surprise now for each so that's a good question so they have made three pillars with regard to earning first is whether it is able to beat the expectation of the analyst so that is 33% weight second is earning revisions whether the analyst are making revisions either downgrade or upgrade uska 33% hai okay <coughs> recommendation changes whether they are saying buy strong buy hold to uske andar uska 33% hai if suppose you know suddenly the the shift from strong buy to buy or buy to hold so uh, so that is there so for that reliance is 5 and reliance is 7 in case of earning revisions okay and for earning surprises reliance is just 2 because it has not given any positive surprises it has given negative surprises rather than positive surprises that's why the score is less okay fine so i'm just leaving it here then you can just go through and understand okay so earning revisions ho gaya then okay then it says like this price target so it tells you, you know what price it will reach by all the 32 analysts okay today the price is how much 2287 so it may reach high very close to 3300 the mean is coming to close to about 2800 okay so look at that you know that uh, uh, red color you know triangle so all the analysts you know some analysts are saying very good some analysts are saying okay some analysts are saying low so it is telling you the high median and low of all the analysts okay so mean is 2770 so that means average today it is 2300 okay the mean recommendation is that it will go to in 12 months it will go to 2770 of course the latest one with the morgan stanley says 3000 okay fine of course they would be sitting on a little higher bracket so this is the mean now you know there is something called average or mean which actually refines everything because you know there are a lot of people saying good bad optimist pessimistic so average is sanitizing the whole thing average numbers are more reliable than looking at the 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 various recommendations so average is actually purifies the data and purifies the recommendation we always says average is a better score than looking at individual in finance we always say average is a better number to look at because it is cleaning up everything the outliers are excluded only we take the and we calculate the average somebody saying that the stock will go down to 500 so we'll exclude that recommendation so they are the outliers somebody will go to 5000 exclude that and then they take the average of the rest so this is normally the process is done and high is 3030 low is 2100 so target versus current 21% return it is going to give you in next one year compared to what the price it is is that okay is it clear okay then we have earning per share so this is a very important number which is part of the earning so how the earning per share will look like so look at you know the annual one okay and the quarterly and annual both are given so let's go to the annual so the mean is that you know it may touch 106 currently it's about 98 rupees okay i don't know whether it is given there yeah it is 98 rupees it's given in 2023 it's 98 so it may touch 
126 in 2024 and in 2025 it may touch 124 okay then high low everything is given so uh, each one is saying by 2020 the lowest is saying that it will go up fine so this is you know uh, the the recommendations with regard to the earning per share which is the most important one eps is the number which is a very significant number for telling whether the share price will go up or not so when the share price goes up uh, it is because how much it's going to earn for them in the next year so earning price is the most important number in analyzing whether stock price is going if the eps is going down the stock is going to go down that's for sure if the eps is going up it is going to go up is that okay going down wo to sabki recommend up and down sab hai mean recommendation dekho aap mean is you know look at the mean okay and look at even the quarterly one so everywhere it is high is you know from 29 uh, uh it is 25 at the moment quarterly it will touch 29 and go to 33 in the next quarter okay yearly it is uh, going up from 98 to 106 to 124 is that okay yes. fine so uh, 32 top analysis of the world okay fine they are not indian they are indian plus the domestic as well as the foreign investors they are tracking this share what is? May I couldn't get you where is it? Analyst recommendation. Analyst recommendation. Ha. So uh, I, I have to look it for it. Okay, I can't just. Ha, buy. Ha, buy sell. Okay, it is like you know. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, so uh, so maybe when you read, the, there is a place where the, uh, the uh, word of all the abbreviate has been explained. So go through that. Fine. So uh, then, uh, uh, so it is showing this way. Then earning surprises. So how, you know, uh, even the surprises are captured, you know, how much was the surprise positive or negative. So annual revenue, it is telling you how the revenue is going to, you know, go up or go down. So I'm just skipping that. Then we come to fundamentals, okay. Positive outlook, strong fundamentals such as high profit margins, low debt levels or growing dividends. Why? It's saying low debt levels. Okay. Currently, the debt of the company has gone down substantially in the last quarter. I'll just share that information. Okay. When we do that Excel sheet. So, the fundamental score has been, you know, uh, this is the trend of the fundamental score. Okay. The fundamental indicators. Now, what are the pillars of the fundamental? Profitability of the company, 25% weight on the profitability. Debt, whether it has taken very high debt or low debt, you know, the company has more debt, then it, it is in problems. Okay, so uh, neither the company should have high debt, nor low debt. I mean, low debt. It should have optimum debt. So we'll talk about that. What is optimum? Then earning quality. No doubt, earning quality is good. It's a conglomerate present into, you know, many businesses. So it should have a very good score, 9 Look at the profitability, the score is only 5. The company is profitable, but not that profitable because of its own reason, because of the crude business particularly. And the debt, the company score is 4, uh, not very high. Okay, But again, this has not been upgraded with a Q2 result, which has been just recently announced two days back. Maybe that it, it will upgrade because the debt has gone down. Then earning quality, it's very good. Dividends, it's declaring almost like, you know, 90% dividend on the face value. Okay, 9 rupees on a 10 rupee share, it is giving. So, dividend ke mamale mein, it is good. Some companies don't declare dividend. Okay. So, there are certain ratios which are given. So, we are going to calculate them uh, on our Excel sheet when we go there. Then comes the relative valuation. <coughs> this is very important. Now, how does the valuation is captured? Is the stock expensive? It is cheap. So, how do we know that? So, first we look at the price to sales ratio. Last time I explained you what is price to sales ratio. Price is nothing but the market cap and market cap to sales. Okay. Like I said, you know, there are two people, two companies. One company is having 100 crores of market cap and the sales is 100 crores. So, price to sales ratio is one. But there is another company with equal same prospects 
having a market cap of 100 crores, but the sales is 50 crores. So price to sales ratio is 2. So the second company is expensive. It is selling twice than, you know, it's doing half the sale. Okay. And the price to uh, sales is too very high. So it's expensive. So the other company having a market cap of 100 crores, sales also 100 crores. So it's a good company. And if both the companies are going to do well, so invest in a company which has a low price to sales ratio. Okay. It's not expensive. So price to sales ratio uh, on the price to sales ratio, it has a, uh, this thing of 6. Okay. So we'll understand what is, how much is the price to sales ratio and compare it with the, its other peers. And the trailing P ratio, which is how it is priced today. Okay. So it is 6. Uh, BPCL and HPCL IOC are 10. Uh, no, uh, BPCL, Hindustan Petroleum, they are 10. Now, they are trading at a very, trading at a very low P ratio. Okay. That's why, you know, they are very cheap. But they are cheap, but not uh, worth investing. Because, you know, their businesses they have, you know, they can't, you know, increase the price of the petrol on the petrol pumps because government is still having a control. The government is liberalized. They have announced that, you know, they are, I mean, oil, oil companies, they are free to announce their petrol prices. The petrol, if the prices go up, they can also hike the price. But at the back end, the government is con controlling them. So they are not having a free hand uh, to run their businesses. Okay. They are not able to hike up the price as the crude price goes up. Okay, so they, they have a generally a lag impact. When the price goes up, they just sit, don't increase because they have to seek a backdoor permission from the government. Okay, but are they price? Quite, uh, you know, some, I mean, state is going on an election or sometime we have so many elections every uh, three months. So they have some political com compulsions coming from the petroleum ministry. So they don't allow the oil companies to give a free hand. So if your business is run in a fashion where you can't decide about your price of the product, then those businesses are not going to trade at a high PE ratio, isn't it? So they command a very low PE ratio because those co companies are not having a freedom how to manage their businesses. Okay, they look cheap; they are having a relative valuation of test score of ten, but some no use. Okay. Then the forward PE reliance looks to be much better. It is seven, so the score is showing a higher from the trailing PE because the higher they have higher visibility of making more profits in the next year. And when you look at their valuation next year, when you look at the forward P, that means we look at the earning per, uh, market price pairs today, divide by earning per share to be earned next year, the share company looks to be cheaper in going forward. Okay. Yeah. So let's look at, you know, this is very important price to sales ratio. Okay. Price to sales ratio is how much? 1.8. Okay, what is the five year average of Reliance 2.1? So, going by that, companies actually trading at a discount, 16% discount to its historical average. Is that okay? So, now person discount pe chal rahi hai, ye price to sales was around 1.8, which is which is 2.1 historical five year. Okay, Sensex trades at 3.4. Okay, so Sensex as a whole is expensive, right? So, compared to Sensex, there's a 49% discount. But again, we can't compare it with Sensex because there are many companies who are trading at a very high price to sales ratio because they deserve to be trading at which are part of Sensex. Fine. All the, you know, consumer companies, retail companies, you know, they always trade at a very lofty valuations. Fine. So when we say that compared to the Sensex is 50% available discount, it has a no meaning. Compare it with a historical average that would have a much, much better, better meaning. Okay. Is that okay? Discount and not making so, we should focus on 16% discount. Haan, we should focus on Absolutely. Not on 49. It is given for your understanding. Aisa nahi hai ki wo relevant nahi hai. It is telling you that compared to the Sensex, it is a cheap stock. But then Sensex com you know, has so many companies. It has a steel company, cement company, uh, you know, uh, I mean, retail company, oil companies, paint companies. So many companies are there. Okay. Fine. So, some of the companies, they have uh, historically traded at a high price to sales ratio. Uh, D-Mart, I, I was trying, trying to, D-Mart is trading about 6 to 7 times price to sales. Okay. When you look at the, go to the screen, you'll find they are trading. Okay. Then, the trailing P ratio, it is trading at 5 years 
five percent discount because the average is 25.5 so even with the trailing p ratio it is available at discount compared to its past forward p it is trading at a five percent premium okay just listen to me the it is a uh, price earning ratio is basically company specific okay fine it is industry specific it is comparable company specific fine so we'll talk about the p ratio it's a it's a very big topic okay you can't be explained that uh, i explained last time a little bit so i'm going to explain in my frequent uh, in future classes because you will have small small knowledge about the p ratio very important ratio and there are many other ratios also which are much better than the p ratio because the p ratio has an inherent defect okay i'm going to tell you how and how it can be cured okay so there are like a forward p ratio would be much better p ratio rather than the trailing p ratio but there are other ratios also price to sales and other ratios which we talk about okay so then we come to you know the price to sales ratio you know it is given uh, you know it is it is declining isn't it so as the share price is going down so it, the company is becoming cheaper and cheaper uh, month by month and in 2021 the price ratio was 3.3 okay fine so then we talk about you know the price momentum which is the last one okay price momentum it gets only one why because you know the stock has not moved at all and you know it was uh, it gets uh, relative strength 50% seasonality 50% so that, that we need to check what it is okay so last 10 days uh, it is giving you you know an average so price performance you know of uh, reliance versus the sensex it is given you so you can see that reliance you know the the reliance has gone up by 5% in one year uh, whereas the sensex which is which one is the sensex red one okay so this you can just figure out for yourself i am just uh, you know uh, this is a price momentum only fine and uh, then we you know all these uh, which have been explained you know uh, all the details about you know all the abbreviations you have used so you can just go through okay and i have shared with you and i am going to give you a you can look for any company you want okay no it is available uh, i do you want to see that okay if you just do normal <laughs> so i am just going to show you money control okay oh net is not there okay i'm just going to share i'm going to tell you that okay so don't worry i'm going to take you to the site also when i just on my uh, internet in the second half i'm going to take you a site and tell you from where you get it okay now we just so this was you know what we have done okay so we have done that okay now look at the analyst presentation okay so this is very important you know the la the last quarter you know how the company has done a little bit okay there is a few long presentation but you must go through the whole presentation to understand you know what reliance is doing it's very interesting so you know so it recorded a, now this is only for quarter the last quarter recorded quarterly abid of 44000 crores or 45000 crores up 30% year on year so last year with the same quarter the profits have jumped by 30% so it's a very great news pichle saal se is saal mein 30% jump mara okay and uh, you know one year abida of reliance is close to about 142000 crores or 144000 crores so in this quarter they have done 44000 crores robust operating performance across across segments so all segments they have six segments okay oil to chemicals oil exploration retail Re reliance digital uh, reliance media and reliance energy okay ha huh, they are giving this presentation to the investors to the foreign investors and you know every quarter when the quarterly results are announced they prepare a slide ppt and they 
you know, hold a presentation, investors presentation, where anybody can invest. All the investors, they can always, all the shareholders, they, they can invest because they will get a... This is a company's claim. A company's claim, yeah. So, it is not like uh, the, the, uh, that, that, what we saw earlier was an independent claim. So, yeah, Joanne, definitely, you have to go with that. But they are giving, it is supported by the numbers, okay. So, they are not saying something ki ye bad gaya wo kam ho gaya, they are supporting with the numbers. So, we have to believe them because the num they are telling. Net profit, 19,000 crores. 30% year, uh, also, the net profit has also gone up and EBITDA has also gone up. Strong growth delivery in consumer businesses, okay. Highest ever quarterly retail segment EBITDA. So, their main revenue is coming from their retail business, okay. Of course, it's coming from all sectors, but retail is booming, okay. So, we'll understand uh, uh, each by Digital sector growth led by network leadership. So, they have a network leadership, they have more number of sites, more number of, you know, uh, uh, switches or exchanges uh, compared to any other operator. Then, um, uh, uh, then strong subscriber addition. So, more numbers of subscribers they're adding compared to all other subscribers like Idea, Airtel and other subscribers. Growing 5G adoption. Sustained O2C, that is oil to chemicals, converting the oil to petrochemicals, petroleum products. Strong domestic demand. So, demand has picked up after the covid is over now and international flight people are traveling and you know the economic activity is rising so the petroleum products being consumed are very high firm fuel cracks and pvc delta so this we have to figure out what it says ramp up of kg basin d6 gas production so you know their krishna godavari d6 uh, main production hub their production has gone up tremendously so we'll, we'll look into that now this is your your retail so, the company has many subsidies. So, the first subsidy is called retail, which is called RRVL. I don't know the full form. Digital services, they're, they're, its subsidy is called JPL, limited or something. Okay. So, look at the revenue. It has gone up, uh, you know, uh, compared to the last year, it has gone up by 18.8%. EBITDA has gone up by 32%. You know, from uh, revenue has gone up to, uh, the figures are given in US million as well as Indian rupees. Because you know there are a lot of foreign investors, so they want to know how much they earn in terms of dollars. EBITDA has gone up uh, uh, is 5,820 crores, which has gone up by 32%. Number of stores 18,060, so they have added 12% more stores. Area in terms of both the retail area as well as the the the, the area which is comes under you know the, the go downs and everything because most of them are now done you know online selling also. So, so 32, 31% in terms of area, 12% in terms of stores. The, so, festival demand leading with gross across segments. Best ever independent is okay, fine. Now, we come to digital services. So, digital services, the revenue has gone up by 10%. The EBITDA has gone up by 12.6%. ARPU has gone up by, the ARPU was 181. What is ARPU? Had I explained that? Last time I explained. So, average revenue per user. So, that means how much an you know, you take the total revenue of the company, divide by the total number of subscribers, it tells you how much they are earning per subscriber. Not earning, how much they are, each subscriber is giving. Like suppose on an average, people are consuming 181 recharges. That means I am charging for say 181, 200 charge karam and 181 use kar liya. So, the company is earning 181. Okay. Now, this ARPU has shown a declining trend. Way back when I was in, you know, started in telecom company, it was close to about 1200 rupees. Then it started coming up. That time they were only postpaid customers. 99 postpaid, there was no prepaid. Now it has become the reverse. 99 prepaid, 1% postpaid. So the ARPUs have been falling. The rates were about 16 rupees per minute for incoming, for outgoing and 8 rupees incoming when it started. And now it's like there is no tariff at all. There's packs. So it, was, it became from per, per minute billing to per second billing and now... You just subscribe to the bank, you have unlimited calling, okay. So, the ARPUs have gone up for the first time, maybe second time in a quarter, we are witnessing an increase in the ARPUs. But ARPUs have been showing a declining trend. You know, I remember we used to, you know, go, we used to have investor meeting, Reliance, Idea, Vodafone, all the companies, you should meet them and discuss how to, you know, increase the tariff. Because this way, the, the whole telecom industry is going to finish. We are going to keep reducing the price. There was a price board. Every day, some company will come up and say that we are reducing the price. <laughs> yeah. 
हाँ आर, चेंज होता नहीं है होगा मतलब अगर बढ़ रहा है तो अब ट्रेंड है तो द ट्रेंड इज दट आपको इज कमिंग डाउन whether yearly or quarterly it's been coming down but now we are witnessing a distinct higher okay so we used to meet as a industry and try to you know stop people from reducing the prices because otherwise we'll be all you know ex- i mean we will be out of the business but it nothing was stopping them and the prices were falling so every day we used to announce a new uh, price tariff every day so we were even not knowing you know what is the price today because yesterday night our marketing team announced a new tariff because you know somebody has announced a price the, the airtel has you know lo- lost the war and price cutting and we had to follow them sometime we were doing that sometime airtel was doing sometime reliance was doing so we had to no option but to keep reducing the prices okay so so subscriber base today is close to about 45 crores okay fine 45 crores of subscribers with reliance there are about close to about more than 100 crores subscriber i am not keeping a track track of that but 120 crores subscribers 115 crore subscribers should be there as of today when i joined telecom there are only 50 lakh subscribers in india who are using mobile it has risen to almost and the tele density was point point 1 that means how many people have mobile per 100 people in india so it was only point 1 person was having a mobile per 100 today it is close to about 90 people are having a mobile per 100 okay so tele density has gone up and you know uh, earlier it used to take about 15 years to get a telephone line and connection in your house but now it takes only a few minutes okay so uh, so this is their their telecom business is also doing up revenues up 10% ebitda is up 12% so i'm just going to run through faster o2c o2c uh, which is you know their oil exploration uh, sorry oil uh, revenue was uh, one ha this is their main business okay uh, there is oil to petrochemical their business their revenue was 147000 crores okay fine so you know and oil to gas and then we have you know uh, the consolidated this is the consolidated this thing so i'm just you can just go through this analyst information so let's go to now the our main job which is we are going to open this re- final reliance industry okay and i'm going to start my so open this file open the income statement so i'm just opening my net also so that we can just uh, so in the meantime i'll just open the you know uh, ye jiska file ke aage final likha hua hai usko khol lijiye aap agar nahi hai to apni purani khol lijiye koi dikkat nahi hai abhi so i am just opening reliant okay so i'm going to use that later first i'm going to talk about okay so this is you know their uh, is it open so if you look at the sales okay sales no no not balance sheet income statement so first of all look at the sales top line i'm going to explain just open my file and then you can do it for yourself you can just download you have done that earlier so you can complete uh, as i have done so sales have been growing okay so sale is today uh, you know ttm number is basically the last now the figures have been up, updated till the two quarters okay fine uh
so i'm just going to open the legal uh, sorry i am so i have actually upgraded till ttm Income statement. Okay, yeah, fine. So the this is the sale number. Okay, go at the end. Yeah, chai coffee ka kya ho? Huh? To pada do hai, fada pada hai. Sir, wo apne net ki. Nii, ab maine kar diya net. Ab maine maine usse le liya. Apne hotspot se. So the growth is eight percent. Okay, how do we do that? We just put the cursor here and go to uh, you know the formulas. So this is very interesting. So please focus and uh, do this also as I'm doing. Okay. So uh, pick up, you know, recently used rate. And NPR is, you know, NPR is 12. How? Uh, how I've done? Just count the number of years. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. 12 and the 13 is the TTM number. Isn't it? So, 13 saal ka figure diye hua hai. Okay, 13. Fine. So, 13 means we have to take one less. Suppose we have to calculate, you know, how much is the growth from this year to this year. We will take one period, one year, isn't it? So, formula, we have to give one less. So, I am going to take uh, recently used rate. Put a figure 12 here. Okay, fine. And present value, put a minus sign here. And pick up the, the first number of sales. 3,57,000 and then future value may put the number last number. So, should it be last number March 20 or should it be TTM? Yes, TTM, take it or take it, then you have to reduce it So, you get No, TTM is last. Now, see, some people take uh, can take even the last this thing then you have to reduce the number of years okay fine so ttm is basically six months of the last year and six months of the current year isn't it so it comprises a whole year fine so it's an overlapping fine so how much is the growth eight percent have you got it and how do we do it basically is that we just put our our cursor here on the blank sheet anywhere and go to uh, you know formulas and pick up financial formulas and pick up the rate formula. So we want to know how much you know the company is growing yearly. What is how the top line is growing? Har saal kitna percentage revenue bad raha. So you know we put the number as 12 here. The numbers are 13. We will put one less. Okay. And then PV will be the the last this thing 2012 number. And the future value will be the TTM number. So if I put minus, you have to put a minus sign here and go to you know. Go to year 2012 number, okay, and then future value will be your last one, the TTM number, okay, and then enter. So I'll get zero here, but I have to put a percentage here. So I'll put a percentage. So it will be the same, okay. So I'm just deleting this. Fine, is that okay? Have you, has everybody got it? So that means the revenue of the company has been growing at a rate of 8% per annum over the last 12 years. Now, if you want to know how many, how it is growing in the last 5 years or 3 years, you can change the formula and calculate. Right? You want to know whether the trend is declining or the trend is going up. In the last 5 years, how the company has grown, then pick up the last 60 year data and then do it. Haji? Future value is ah, positive, rega, TTM. Rega. And present value will be the first year, 2012. How much break is it? Is it done? Is it done? So we break. After the break, we will see it a little fresh. Is that okay? I'm just stopping the recording and then I'll just take some queries which you have.